venerables and most um, uh, eminent guest speakers. Now we are starting our program. And today we are celebrating 2,616 years of great renunciation, which is called Maha Avinish Karmana in Buddha's life, which, uh, which took place at Tilora, Tilora Court Palace last night on the 23rd night, midnight. So on the full moon day of Asada. So it took a place and uh, Sakya Prince Siddhartha Gautam renounced his palatial luxury life and his you know, upcoming throne for the sake of the people. He wanted to you know, go for searching the truth to relieve the mankind from their sorrow and sufferings. Thank you for, very much for attending this meeting today and I welcome you with a big heart and I just bring a message from Buddha's Tirola Court Palace. I just come back to Kathmandu now to conduct this meeting. And now we start our program. And thank you, uh, most venerable uh, from Vietnam. And uh, thank you, most venerable from uh, Thailand, Anil Sakya. And thank you, our good friend, FNG Hansen from Indonesia. And thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Asin Nandaka from Myanmar, and thank you, our great friend of Nepal, uh, Sam Chong from Thailand, and thank you, Kate, Kate, uh, Kate Ho, Kate oh, Ho, sorry, Ocho, sorry, uh, if I did not pronounce well, and oh, Maitri, Maitri Bichu, the most venerable Maitri Bichu from Lumini, Maitri, welcome, and uh, and uh, Ucho from Myanmar. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Sarvapadan from Nepal, and, uh, and most of, yeah, I, I can see most of the people. I hope I have said everybody. Yeah, Tifani. Tifani <laughs> <Hannah, laughs> and uh, Da Hin Tida, I, from Myanmar. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we have Hala, Hala, I, from Myanmar. Hôm nay, chúng ta có uh, Hala Hala from Sri Lanka. And uh, welcome. Everybody, now I would like to request Venerable uh, Madri from Lumini. Và bây giờ tôi xin kính thỉnh prayers for the start of this. Thượng tọa uh, Madri uh, đến từ uh, together with Lumini, Venerable Anil Sakya from, from Thailand. Okay, Madri and Venerable mm -hmm. Anil Sakya for the prayers. Um, và cũng uh, xin uh, kính thỉnh từ Anil Sakya. Namotasa, Namotasa, Bhagavato, Arahato, Sama, Sambuddhasa, Bhagavato, Arahato, Sama, Sambuddhasa, Tapit, you, Vivadanto, Sapro, Govinasato, Matte, Bhavato, Vandarayo, Sukhiti, Kayuko, Bhava, Thank you. Thank you. Namo Buddhaya. Thank you. Uh, uh, now I would like to I would like to invite uh, Venerable Maitri Bhikkhu to say some some uh, to bring to highlight you know some um, uh, story or some background about this great renunciation okay for a few minutes and after that I would like to invite uh, Venerable Anil Sakya. So Maitri can you say something about the great renunciation 2616? Last night your presence was there and we we're all very honored and proud of it. So would you like to say something about this great renunciation 2616 anniversary? Thank you, Mr. Vikram Pandey. It's very important for us Buddhists to have memory of this renunci great renunciation of Prince Siddhartha, which we had observed last night, midnight, in Kapilwasta Eastern Gate. Actually, 
Sri Siddhartha had different things in Kapilvastu when he was as a prince. He saw many different things which he did not like to attend. So, and also as a prince, he was fulfill everything in the, his palace, but he saw very sick people and also old people, dead person, and uh, this uh, Buddhist monk, hermit. So he did not want to stay in the palace. And also the many problems he saw between the people. And so he wanted to go out. Actually, uh, the Brahmins, when he was named at the age of five by Kondanya, the youngest Brahmin, he called that he'll become a Sarvagya one day. So at the, in this way, he got renunciation on Asada Purnima day, July full moon day. And it's not only renunciation, also he went to his mother's womb and the uh, Asada Purnima, and also secondly, this uh, great renunciation. Thirdly, uh, first uh, Dhamma preaching, Dhamma Chakra Pautan Sutra Desana was uh, delivered in Saranath. And also it's called that uh, Buddha himself went to his uh, mother's place, uh, heaven, to preach Abhidhamma on this day. Very important things we have mentioned. We uh -oh. have many scholars here like uh, Pra Anil Shakya and also Dr. Siri Sumedha from Sri Lanka and also from Myanmar, Indonesia. So I would like to listen from him. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, Dr. Sumedha is here. Venerable Sumedha, not yet. Kirish Sumedha. Dr. Sumedha, are you here? Now I would like to invite uh, Venerable Anil Sakya, who hails from Nepal also, and now he's a resident in the Royal Palace of King of Thailand. So I would like to invite him to say, to highlight some, uh, you know, background of this great renunciation. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa. Most venerable Maitri Bhante, the president of Akhil Nepal Bhikkhu Mahasangha, the organizer of Bhikkhu Pandey, the all my old colleagues from all over the world and all participants who are participating in this special uh, discussion, a special program organized by the hometown of the Buddha Kapil Westu. I think uh, this is a very good starting for the day such today. Today is a full moon day. Today is a day when uh, Buddha gave, you know, accordingly there are so many things occurred on this very day in the life uh, of the Buddha. One very thing, I guess that it is as the Venerable Maitri Bande just mentioned is that, uh, and that this occasion, what we are here, is the day when Buddha renunciated his great palace. The day which the Buddha really gave up the, all the luxury in the palace and then uh, went to search for something which is, we are indebted with. The thing which Buddha searched and found and shared becomes something very, very valuable, not only to us, but this to this very world. So therefore, it is not only the day when Buddha went and searched and left the, his luxury in the palace, but it is the same day again today, the Asada Purunima day, when after the, his enlightenment, after his awakening, awakening at the, awakening at the Buddha Bodhigaya, it's about nearly about over two months later, uh, Buddha went to the Saranath and then where he preached the first, uh, what we call his first sermon. Although 
it is not actually the first sermon, but it is the first sermon which when he delivered, it's become a very active, is when he delivered, it's become something changed the world, it's trembled the world, and then make this world totally change from the time, from that time. So therefore it is very important that the Dharma Chakra Divasa are the day when he turned the wheel of the Dharma. Where I would like to say that is another turn, turning the wheel of the Dharma as it is. But if you really look at the word etymology, you will see that it is the great message which I retranslated it from the literary point of view, from the etymological point of view is that it is a day when Buddha first proclaimed as the, it is a day for sustainable development day. Because the word Dharma Chakra itself, if we translate into the modern language, it is not a turning the wheel of Dharma, but it is the very idea where the sustainable development in practice is all about. Because Pawatana, it means that it is a practice. And the Chakra means that it is a development, it is a running, it is a something moving forward. It is not only the will, it doesn't mean that it's the will, it is many something developed. And the Dharma, actually it is a sustainability. The dr, the word dr in a Pali, and the tner in a Latin, basically it is a sustain. So sometimes we mistranslated the word sustainable development in a very different way. But if you go back to the etymological point of view, it is a day the Buddha first announced the whole message of sustainable development on this very day as Asada Purnima day. But before that, why Buddha left his luxury in the palace? You know, everyone is, we are, for example, we are chasing after the, all this kind of luxury. We are chasing after the, all this kind of, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 what you call is in the, uh, the, the richness, the, the, the things we, we are really chasing after money, name, fame, good house, big house, big car. But Buddha did just opposite. Is that he got everything there in the palace and then he left all those things behind and chased for something which is more valuable, which is a spiritual attainment. So this is a very, very striking uh, message for us in this 21st century. When this world is plagued by this COVID-19, I think it is a very, very strong message here that we have to look at that. If we want to chase something, not chasing for this, what Buddha has left, but we have to chase if we are the disciple of the Buddha, we are the disciple of the Prince Siddhartha. The Prince Siddhartha left the home in order to find something better than home. But at the moment, we are going against the Buddha's own way of doing that. We are going for the name, we are going for the money, we are going for the uh, title and so and so. And totally forget that how Buddha moved, how Buddha left his palace behind. The message of leaving palace behind is very important in a sense that it is not just only leaving the palace. If you go to the life of the Buddha, there is a many versions of the life of the Buddha. Uh, we say that he left the palace because of uh, he uh, discontent with the life there. Or sometimes he said that he sneak out, he hide out. But some other text that he consulted the things with his father. So that's why he was not hiding out actually. He went with the true and uh, very transparent con uh, confrontation with his father and his father can't give him any, 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 any uh, any satisfied answers. That's why he left his palace. So there's so many story behind all those of Buddha's life of Buddha, if you go to the text from the text. But beyond that, I would like to recall as today is the day when Buddha left the palace. So what do we mean by the palace here? Palace is something that uh, we are always, although we are not a prince these days, but it is a simile that we are what we are attached to. This day we are attached to so many things, just like in a palace, there are so many nice things to attach with. So similarly, in our life, the, the whole idea of a palace is that uh, something we really treasure, something we really like it, and we don't want to give it up. And that is the what Buddha find that is the 
source of the dukkha, the source of the suffering. So therefore, the Buddha left the palace as a symbol that he is really putting all his attachment, whether it is so lovely, whether it is something suffering, where it is something very, very nice, beautiful, his beautiful wife, his cute kids, his uh, beloved fam family, everything he left behind. Basically, it is saying that uh, he left all of what makes him happy, makes him suffering, makes him sad, makes him glad. So all those factors in one word we call attachment. He He's leaving that attachment behind and then go for something which is non-attachment, which is go for something which is uh, what he call is sustainability in a sense. So this is a day. I think this is a very, very good occasion for us to come back and really rethink about uh, what is the meaning of the great renunciation. It is not a, such a thing as we always think that it's just leaving the house. The living the house is these days we are the, the diaspora, we are diasporic society these days. We are living our, our house anyway. We are doing our work here and there. But it is not kind of literally like that. The whole idea of a renunciation is that uh, it is something that you have to develop your mind and leave everything which make your suffering, which make your mind suffer behind. And go for what? Go for the Dharma Chakra. What is Dharma Chakra? So I'll come back to this point. As today is Asala Purnima Day, it is a day Buddha first gave someone to the five ascetic. The Dharma Chakra Divasa, the Dharma Chakra Day, actually, as we said, turning the wheel of the Dharma. Uh, chakra, as we translate as a wheel. But in fact, etymologically, it also means that uh, moving forward. Moving forward is the whole idea of a development. So the word dharma in Pali and Sanskrit is basically is a word from the dr. And dr is a root verb, means that upholding, sustaining. So same word as the, in the European world, they are using the word sustainability or sustainable. But it's a, so the word sustain is from the tner and then sus as a prefix, which means that upholding. So sustainable, it means that it's not making that forever, but it means that whatever the cause and condition around, we can uphold it. So that is the very idea of the dharma. So therefore the dharma chakra means that it's not for the Buddhist, not for the Hindu, not for the Christian, not for, for every one of us, because the message in the Dharma Chakra, Buddha says that we have to give up the two extreme. That is that uh, we have to give up our kind of uh, self-indulgence and that uh, self-mortifications. Not too much, yeah. not too little. That is a whole idea of contentment. That is a whole idea of a sustainability. So in that whole idea of the Dharma Chakra, if we put it in the four noble, uh, four noble truths and the eight noble path, but summary, in a summary, we are, he's talking about the sila and samadhi and panya. What is sila, samadhi, panya? Sila means that it is about society. Samadhi, it is about our mental quality. And panya means that it is about the quality of our intellectuality. So therefore, the whole idea of a sustainable development as the United Nations announced, actually it is nothing more than what Buddha has taught on this very day. That is a dharma chakra. Pawatana, sustainable development in action. So if you want to be sustainable, if you want to live your life sustainably, what you have to do is that first thing, you have to think yourself that who you are, what is your place in the society? It means that, that you become somebody because you have to deal with someone else. It is a action and reactions and become something you. So I, I am a monk. So if there's no other lay here, and so the monk is not important, but we have a two categories here. So monk and lay become something. So we call day because there is a night. We call white, there is a black. We got good, there is a bad. So therefore, this is kind of relevancy. So Buddha basically means that uh, things are making up like that. So if we have to understand that and then able to uphold the whole thing, so we realize ourselves based on the society, based on the action we are doing. At the moment I am a monk, 
at the moment I am a speakers, but I'm become a listener in a few moments. I'm become a something in a few moments. So we are changing our life all the time. And in, in that sense, how we behave, how we identify, how we practice ourselves uh, amidst of other, that is all about the sin. That is all about what you call is moral behavior or the ethics. So that is the first message what Buddha gave on that day. The second message is that uh, once you realize that you have to live with someone else, you have to live with others. So how do you manage your desire? How do you manage your anger? How do you manage your ignorance? That is what you call a samadhi. The management of yourself to be able to live with others in a more fruitful way, in a more productive way, in a more creative way, in a more innovative way. That is a whole idea of the samadhi here. And the panya means that uh, once you know that, the whole thing is that uh, not kind of teaching, not kind of believing, but you have to learn from the Samma Sambuddha. Buddha Sambuddha, knowing yourself in the way that everything leading to the end of that suffering. So therefore, the Dharma Chakra gave us a day is I have been calling in many of the conferences around the world. I even share this idea with the, uh, His Excellency, the General Secretary of the United Nations, uh, not with the, with the Ban Ki-moon and as well as the modern, the, the modern one, uh, the, uh, the Guterres, that actually Buddha was the first person in this whole earth who raised the idea of a sustainable development. In the message of the Dharma Chakra, if we translate it correctly, means that the, the sutra are on sustainable development in action. Pavatana as action, chakra means a development, dharma means sustainable. So as a, uh, our organizer, Pande, is talking about it because Pande is talking about the sustainability. I think this is how we started. We have to start our sustainability from today, the day Buddha talked about on this Ashada Purnima. So when we think of Dharma Chakapavatana Day, it is not only the historical event, but bringing back to the present, bringing out our life, how we live our life in a more sustainability. So if you want to worship, if you want to become a kind of a real practitioner of Buddhism, I would say that go and make yourself, utilize yourself to be somebody who is a model of practicing sustainable development in action. And that is, a, we become a true disciple of Buddha. We become a, a real Buddhist in that sense, means that we are awakened, we are the Buddha ourselves, that which Prince Siddhartha left that message to us. And it, Thank you. that message is even more important than even at the time of the Buddha in the Kapil Bastu. True. So this is the message that United Nations is going for. This is a message that the whole world is really searching for. So therefore, let us practice our Dharma Chakra Pavatana, Sutta, the discourse on the, uh, the sustainable development action, which Buddha gave on this very day. The when Buddha left the palace and then he went for that very knowledge of sustainable development. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ben Rebel. It's very enlightening. Uh, and this is, this is the real Dhamma Chakra for the common people who can understand the meaning of Dhamma Chakra. Today, what you have explained to uh, all of us, it is for all the common and ordinary citizen and ordinary people of the whole world, so they can understand you better. What I would like to uh, relate a little bit, uh, Venerable Anil Sakya, that even Einstein had praised, you know, the scientist Einstein had praised Sakya, you know, Muni Buddha, and he is also talking about, you know, actions and reactions, like theory of relativity, you know, even Einstein has praised Buddha, like anything. And in the same way, in America and Europe, they are talking about community service. But Buddha said it 2,700 years ago in the spirit of Sangha. Okay, Sangha may have many modalities, like, you know, maybe it is only for the uh, what you call monks and you know junior monks or it is for the common people so sangha spirit is community service which buddha said 2700 years ago and it is the it is the basic norms 
of moving the society ahead in America and in Europe. And another beautiful thing is the sustainable societies that you support yourself in cooperation with Mother Nature, respecting the Mother Nature. You live with Mother Nature and Mother Nature lives with you. That is the real sustainability so that people don't have to use and overuse the natural resources in the name of magic economics or in the name of miracle economic development, you know, by overusing the mother nature's natural resources. So this, this is not necessary and people are realizing it. That could be, you know, many people around the world today, if you look at the statistics and data, people are picking up, you know, Buddhism as their way of life. Even the Hollywood stars, Hollywood celebrities are picking up Buddhist way of life because they find in this philosophy the true meaning of life and the truth. So that is the reason we are now, we have started to celebrate this uh, Asada Purnima, great renunciation to tell the world that these things have been, you know, disconnected or missing. So now we have to revive it. We should understand it through the, you know, through the sermons of Venerable Anil Sakya and through the sermons of Maitri Bhikkhu, through the sermons of As uh, Dr. Asin Nandaka, through the sermons of most venerable um, Teach Not To, you know, so people will understand better and better. And at the end of the day, when we are, uh, you know, living a sustainably supported life, we have a good economics, which I have named is as Buddhonomics. Buddhonomics will not produce Warren Buffett or Bill Gates or Apple's, uh, you know, Steve Jobs or Amazon's boss. But Buddhonomics will produce a very sustainable society living with mother nature. The dad is working, the um, you know, son is working, mother is working, working in some sense in kind of contributing, you know, to uphold the society of the high human, uh, high human humanity meaning. And they have all the happiness as well as the real Sangha spirit community life. And that becomes sustainable without any grants or any, you know, financial aid from the central government or World Bank or International Monetary Fund. I think this is what we have to spread the world, you know, through all our, you know, fellow human being. And that will bring back our, our society back to the natural norms so that everybody is happy. If the house is happy, Village is happy, town is happy, nation is happy, and the whole world is happy. Now, why I'm trying to, you know, introduce a little bit of tourism through these kind of a festivals, because in, in Nepal, Buddhist festivals are not many, like other festivals, because in Lumini now, the tourists are visiting 1,600,000, 1,600,000 tourists are visiting Lumini, the birthplace of Buddha, but not even 300,000 tourists are visiting the palace, the Tilorakot palace, the Anishin Kapil Vastu uh, palace of Sakya Prince Siddhartha Gautam Buddha. So this will bring also big, you know, economic divide between Lumini and uh, the palace, the Sakya kingdom in, 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 in due course of time. That's why we are trying to bring it, you know, together so that the, you know, economy growth, tourism growth, spiritual, you know, the conscious people's growth will be very sustainable and very even to support each other. So we hope to continue this again and again in this future also. So make the, you know, bring the Sakya kingdoms to former glory, you know, by small, small economics, small, small spiritual life, small, small humanity life, full of humanity, and small, small Sangha spirit life. So this is what I'm, we are trying to do. Thank you, uh, Venerable Anil uh, Sakya. It's been very, very enlightening. But of your sermon and speech today, and we'll record it and we'll, we'll uh, you know, spread it to other people also, you know, in, in future. Thank you very much. Now I would like to welcome today, Dr. Ravindra Pant, former um, uh, professor of Nalanda University. Professor Saab, welcome. Welcome, Professor Saab. Namami, namami, namami. Namo tassa uh, bhagavatu. Sugar. Uh, I would like to welcome, Oh, uh, Venerable Sugar Sumeda from Sri Lankan Monastery. Are you there? Venerable? I am here. Huh? I am with you. Okay. Would you like to say something? 
Oh, we cannot see you. Cuma kamu. Dr. Sumeda. Yang mana enggak? I am, I am I am in the line. I am in the line. Can you see me? Well, I'm trying to see you, but somewhere I cannot see you. No, I am in the line with you. Sumeda, yeah, Kirish Sumeda, yeah. Yeah, I am in the line. Would you like to say something about this about this great renunciation, Maha Abhinish Karmana, today, uh, yes. 2660th anniversary, its meaning and its its message of Buddha to whole world and to the human being, uh, human society. Would you like to say something of your vision and your course, interpretation, course, the way course, you understood for, like Buddha, to, for uh, this renunciation? May I start now? Yeah. Go ahead. Welcome. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa. Sukho buddhanam uppado sukha saddhamma desana. The birth of the Buddha is happy. Teaching of the Buddha also happy. First of all, while paying homage to all the Buddhas and Pacheka Buddhas and Arahant. I pray for good health, happiness, and long life of world community. And also, I would like to offer prayer in this historical sacred day to overcome difficulties, COVID pandemic. And uh, especially, I would like to appreciate Mr. Sarad Pradhan and uh, Vikram Pandekaji and uh, all the Buddhist followers and well wishers who initiated to organize this uh, program through Radio Tourism, Voice of Nepal Tourist. And uh, regarding Lumbini and Kapilavastu, 2616 Abhinish occasion. And today, uh, before go to uh, subject, I would like to pay my tribute, our tribute to all the pioneer Buddhist and uh, well-wishers who initiated to discover the Lumbini pillar, Mr. Aloy, German archaeologist, and also uh, senior archaeologist P.C. Mukherjee, and people who discovered that Tilora Court and uh, Ramya Suramya Subha Palace and the Lumbini village, especially in recently from the Lumbini Development Council and uh, Lumbini Archaeological Nepal Archaeological Department, they discovered that uh, Lumbini village and also the seven lotus footprint where walk Prince Siddhartha after taken birth first to the world. Then these are very important regarding Buddhism and uh, Buddha because uh, Buddha is not uh, uh, belong to Nepal and for whole community. Therefore, each and every his word and places are very important. Therefore, first of all, there's so many Buddhist monks and Buddhist followers and well-wishers in Nepal during last century and two, two centuries, they sacrificed to find out these Lumbini and Kapilavastu, Tilora Court, and develop these places and to develop as a tourist places to bring to as a UNESCO World Heritage. Therefore, first of all, I would like to pay tribute to those all the late Venerable monks, uh, including Venerable Amitananda and uh, Vimalananda and other, all the Venerable monks. And also, I would like to offer my prayer to most Venerable Bhante Maitri and uh, other, all the senior monks who are no. initiated to uh, propagate Buddha Dhamma message in Nepal and Lumbini and Kapilavastu and Kathmandu and the place where Buddha born and where he spent 29 years. Born there. And today, uh, 
Shadi Purnima Day, very important for World Buddhist community, and especially uh, Buddha Birthday, Vesak Day, how important for uh, world communities. Buddha took birth in Lomini, Prince Siddhartha, and he attained enlightenment in Bodh Gaya, oh. and he passed away Parinirvan in Pushanaga. Oh. Then, similarly, similarly that oh. uh, Buddha, by his, uh, in his last uh, sermon, Mahaparinirvana, he declared four noble places. Therefore, uh, that uh, Saranath, among those four noble places, first preaching place. <laughs> Today, Asadi Purnima Day, uh, very his uh, important historical event uh, happened, especially the Prince Siddhartha's mother, Queen Mahamaya, uh, took pregnant. Then after uh, his Abhinis Kaman, after 29 years, and also uh, first preaching of the Buddha Dhamma Chakka in Saranath, and also first Buddhist council after Buddha's passing away after two months in Rajgir under the patronage of uh, Venerable Upali and uh, uh, King Ajasat. Then also today starting the Vassana rainy season from today. Therefore, these uh, incidents are very important for world Buddhist community and other all the uh, people. And regarding uh, Lombini, especially uh, we are very happy in the Tripitaka, the, after Buddha's passing away after two months that all the Buddha's uh, teachings collected that in Tripitaka clearly mentioned Lombini uh, in the Sutta Pitaka and other all the Attakata and uh, very historical uh, Chronologies, it is clearly mentioned where is Lombini, it is in Kapilavastu. Between Devudaha and Lost Song. Lost Song. Sound lost. These places and they pay homage. Then after finally, the, we can see the 1867-1897, the German archaeologist he discovered that uh, Lombini Garden. Therefore, there are no any controversy regarding Lombini, regarding the birthplace. And also Kapilavastu, the already 1867, 19, 1897, the PC Mukherjee and they discovered Tirora Court and Rameswaram Meswaba Maliga. It is in Nepal and it is also very clear. There are no controversy. There are no two places, Kapilavastu or Lomini. And there are only one Buddha. There are only one Buddha, there are no two Buddha, only one Buddha because he uh, born in Nepal, Lombini, and he attained enlightenment. Oh, and, uh, there are only one Buddha. Then it is in Lalita Vistara clearly mentioned. So Bodhisattva Ratanavaro Atulyo Manusaloke Kitasukai Jato Sakyanangame Janapade Lombine. Excellent gold that uh, similar to excellent gold that Bodhisattva born in Lombini, Sakya, Gami. Then also it is, uh, uh, we can see when uh, Buddha visited to uh, Rajgir during that time in uh, uh, Buddha explain to Emperor Bimbisara regarding his clan and also he belonged to uh, Sakya clan and he from Nepal, Kapilavastu and all the his uh, 
lineage Buddha explained clearly. Therefore, regarding Lumbini or Kapilavastu, it is, uh, there are no any controversy. We are so happy that uh, people uh, in, in Nepal and Kapilavastu and in uh, tourism radio, they initiated to organize this uh, Abhidishkamana uh, festival in uh, Nepal in Kapilavastu. And today, uh, especially uh, Dhamma Chakka Day, Dhamma Chakka Ubbe uh, Ananusate in the, in the history first time, Buddha expounded this teaching, middle path, and for noble truth, and eightfold path. Aryashtanaka Magga, Majjama Patipada, Chattar Yariya Satchani. This kind of philosophy and teaching never heard ever before. Therefore, it is very important. After Buddha passing away, Emperor Ashoka, first time in the history from India to uh, abroad, beyond geographical boundaries, Buddha's message sent. It is uh, today we are having Theravada, Mahayana, and Vajravana three schools. Sri Lanka, Burma, and Thailand, they are following. Theravada Buddhism and Japan and China and Korea, these countries, they are following Mahayana Buddhism. It is initiated by Emperor Karishka during the fourth Buddhist Council. And also Vajrayana Buddhism, it is uh, uh, in Tibet and uh, Bhutan that uh, Vendamal Patma Sambhava brought that teaching from Nalanda. Therefore, this all the schools believe one Buddha, he born in Lumbini, and he spent his 29 years in Kapilavastu, and his father was Suddhodana, and mother was Queen Mahamaya. Therefore, one Buddha came to this world, and uh, today, during this pandemic also, uh, we know Buddha explained uh, his teaching, whatever he teach, this teaching is the medicine to disappear all the sick and miseries and uh, disturbs of this world. We can see why he uh, renounced from the home in the history first time. Today we can see there are boundary war, country to country war, and within uh, uh, world, the countries are divided and they are fighting rulers and people, but uh, his kingdom, he left from his kingdom and he gave up because of mankind. In this world, wherever there will be one way, to, I will find out to take, overtake this, all the people, suffering people. Therefore, King Satcha Gavesi, King Kusala Gavesi, what is the truth? And what is the, what is the evil and what is the good thing? For this way, he left the home, then after he expounded, and then after, Buddha hang bodhisami, muttu hang moche parang. I will first understand, then after I will teach, the way how to overcome. Therefore, in this world, there are, during the Buddha period, more than 62 philosophers and sastras. But Buddha explained how, what is the cause of suffering, what is the way to live and cessation. Therefore, that is why Buddha is uh, important. Today, we are so happy in this historical uh, day uh, from Sri Lanka, especially after Buddha's passing away, history first time, Tripitaka uh, in the history first time recorded and preserved in Matale Aluvihara uh, temple. Then after, after Buddha's passing away, first Buddhist plaque created uh, by Sri Lanka, the Mahabodhi Society of India established by Anagarika Dharmapala to preserve these uh, important Buddhist places including Lumbini and Kapilavastu in Nepal. Therefore, uh, Sri Lankan people and Sri Lankan Buddhist monks uh, 
having good connection relationship with kapilavastu and nepal especially establishing nepal sang in lum nepal that first today monks are observing vas first uh, first seema established by sri lankan buddhist monks in nepal lalitpur in kathmandu therefore uh, in according to mahaya uh, mahavansa in sri lanka uh, kings and uh, nepal queens they had uh, lineage uh, relationship and married uh, century over relationship maintained by sri lanka according to mahavansa therefore we are very much happy today or not only sri lanka not only india to whole world buddha is very important and we should uh, come forward to locate all the important places to the buddha's life including that uh, uh, kapila kapilavastu kingdom and devadaha kingdom koli kingdom ramagama kingdom and malla kingdom and uh, these all the kingdoms there are so many important places and within the nepal boundaries and indian boundary therefore we should come forward to find out these places because buddha belong to all world all community all nation therefore uh, while appreciating all the effort you made to develop these places and also while paying to tribute to especially uh, prime minister who knew who initiated to develop that uh, lumbini development plan and also who initiated to establish temples in lumbini and kapilavastu especially uh, the tilora kota site there are so many nepal monks they sacrificed their life in the beginning to find out those jungles and places to maintain therefore while praying to tribute i offer uh, prayer to venerable maitri and other all the venerable monks in nepal to propagate buddha dhamma and also the all the administrators and asi archaeology uh, people and our, all the community well wishers to propagate buddha dhamma and develop places and also i pray in this, in this occasion may everybody be happy and good health and success bhuta va sambhave shiva sabbe sapta bhavantu sukhi tatta whether you Uh, seen or no whether near or far everybody be <coughs> namo buddha thank you thank you uh, venerable sumeda your line is disconnected but uh, it was a very very enlightening sermon today uh, i hope you can come back online again and thank you are you hearing me venerable sumeda i think he has some problem in his line so now the next turn we would like to you know go after uh, venerable sumeda finishes his remarks the next uh, person we would like to invite is the next person we would like to invite after venerable sumedha finishes his remark is reverend professor narishman bhadracharya phd from uh, he is also uh, the formerly uh, vice chancellor of buddhist university in nepal welcome narish sir welcome Narayan thank sir. you thank you very yeah, much you start uh, now i think venerable yeah venerable sumeda one moment venerable sumeda now we have that uh, we are yeah listening thank you finally we could see your face now we are listening to reverend professor narishman bhadracharya from formerly uh, formerly vice chancellor of buddhist university of nepal welcome welcome thank sir you. thank you very much thank you very much पांडे सर पांडे जी विक्रम पांडे जी कई साहब आई वुड लाइक टू फर्स्ट पे माई होमेज टू द ऑल द श्रावक बुद्धस एंड ऑल द प्रत्येक बुद्धस एंड ऑल द सम्यक संबुद्धस सेकेंडली आई वुड लाइक टू 
pay my respect to the all the most venerables, venerables, reverend, and Buddhist scholars like Professor Pant and others. It's my pleasure to see all of you <coughs> in the very auspicious day. For me, it is a kind of small uh, sangha, uh, sangha, you know, kind of sangha, you know, a little bit academic sangha, you know, and also spiritual sangha. You know. uh, I'm so happy that Vikram Pandeji come up with uh, such a uh, very important and interesting and time demand uh, theme about the Kapil Bastu and its relation with uh, Buddha and Buddhism and many other our dis distinguished scholars have already spoken about the importance of the Buddha's life history and the prominent event of Buddha's life related to Kapilabastu. What we learn that uh, it is a, not simply a regional understanding, but it is, I would like to say, uh, international Buddhist understanding or international Buddhist theory that uh, spiritually or classically, we divide Buddha's whole entire life history or his uh, life into 12 episodes. And it is technically known as the Buddha's, the Dwadasa Charitra. The Dwadasa Charitra of Buddha means the 12 episode of Buddha's life. So according to that understanding, Siddhartha Gautam in the form of Svetakyutu Bodhisattva descended to the Kapilabastu from Tushita heaven. And this incident took place into the Kapilabastu. Before he descended to the Kapilabastu, means uh, the conception of Mahamaya Devi, uh, before coming to the earth from heaven to Sita, he has tried to find out the proper location, proper region to descend. Firstly, he gone through, I mean, visually, mentally gone through 16 Janapadas, the 16 metropolitan cities of that time. And he could, he found something wrong, something weaknesses in the, all the 16 Janapadas. Though all the Janapadas are prosperous, well enough, but still Svetakyadu Bodhisattva found something lacking some sort of shortage. Uh, it seems that mostly the spiritual lacking in the 16 Janapadas. And finally, he found such a place which deserved to descend. That is the Kapilabastu. And we all know the name of the Kapilabastu is given after the name of says Kapila, Kapila Muni. But this Kapila Bastu became more popular, not because of the Kapila Muni, but because of the Sakya Muni. Once he descended into the Maya Devi's womb from the Tushita heaven. And since then till now, we all are uttering the name of Kapila Bastu. We are talking about the Kapila Bastu not because of Kapila Muni, but because of the Sakya Muni. So this place Kapila Bastu became most important because of the Sakya Muni. 
and this place is not only so important just because of his descendant but also he has spent his 29 29 years youth life it is also another important point is 29 years he didn't play there it was a place from where he inspired to depart for the quest of truth and his departure from the kapil vastu it is known as the maha abhinishkramana and that maha abhinishkramana mostly people describe in negative tone negative way oh siddhartha could not be happy in kapila vastu with a luxurious life so and so it is a one way of interpretation of story but another way is that kapila vastu is such a holy place for shetakyatu bodhisattva or siddhartha gautam where he inspired for the quest of truth so we all should not only describe his departure in a negative tone and also look at the kapila vastu such a way that it luxurious life but also we have to see the another side of the importance of kapila vastu if kapila vastu is not a good place for bodhisattva he could not have descended there since his descendant was happened to or this is descend descended took place in the kapil vastu and it make us it make us clear that is very very important place holy place and is a source of inspiration for the quest of truth so this importance has to be highlighted i think now it is time to talk about the kapil vastu in the many ways it is time to talk about the importance of kapila vastu because we have already talked about the importance of lumini garden bodhgaya saranath usinagar also we have talked about lot about the uh, gridakuta shravasti so many other place but uh, we see very few people talk about the kapila vastu and our uh, vikram pandey ji has highlighted already how many people visited visit uh, lumbini in a year but out of that very very minimum people maybe in percentage one percentage or two percentage visit the kapila vastu i think now it is time to talk about the kapila vastu as a source of inspiration it is equally important as importance of as the lumini and other place other buddhist sites and also now uh the excavation team are working in the kapila vastu they are finding out many many interesting historic uh evidences and that shows enough that there is no doubt about the kapil vastu there is only one kapil vastu in the world and it is uh not time to make a debate about the where is the kapil vastu but it is time to highlight the only one kapil vastu which is real and which is located in the uh in it in the political territory of uh nepal and in fact buddhism is boundaryless religion but some reason we have to make a landmark that is only a conventional truth but ultimately the world is one and buddhism is a boundaryless religion which never talk about any kind of discrimination including the original discrimination so right now i am in a context of uh, you know i'm at my house but uh, we are celebrating guru purnima and buddha's maha abhinishkramana day and buddha's uh, the dharma chakra parvartan day so many our followers are visiting me and they want to listen 
and today is very very busy day for me. I I'm have been busy from the morning early in the morning, and it will run till late night. So I'm now in the uh, ritual context, and we are performing ritual over here, and people are visiting. So I'm not going to take a long time uh, today. I'm very sorry for that. Uh, now finally, I would like to uh, conclude my uh, this small speech. Uh, it's not a speech; it's talking with the, all you all, our friend friends, Kalyana Mitras. Mm, that uh, finally, I would like to say again, once uh, once again. Now it is time to talk about the Kapilabastu, uh, which we are left behind from last many years. Uh, but now it is time to talk about uh, Kapilabastu, the importance of Kapilabastu, and the vibration of Kapilabastu, and the uh, inspirational as a inspirational source uh, for the quest of truth. So uh, I would like to conclude with that. So let's. Uh, put a hand together and let's make a, a vow or make a plan to talk a series of uh, talk program or small seminar, big seminar, national seminar, or international seminar um, that will highlight the uh, Kapila Bastu in the proper way. And also it will enlighten us, all of us, uh, and also inspire all the Buddhist tourists and other tourists or pilgrimage uh, or the followers to visit the Kapil Bastu and have a source of inspiration for the quest of truth. Okay, Pandeji, I'm sorry that uh, I can't stay longer. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much. Sure, sure, sure. It's an honor. Thank you, Venerable. Thank you, Reverend Professor Shah. Thank you very much. Thank you for your enlightening speech. For today. I will Thank I you. will listen it. I will uh, listen and keeping the following the my ritual. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. So after we have such a beautiful, you know, sermon or speech from Reverend Dr. Professor Narisman Bajasari, former Vice Chancellor of Buddhist University of Nepal. Now we would like to go to most uh, uh, venerable again. So we would like to invite Dr. Asin Nandaka from Myanmar. Uh, Dr. Nandaka, would you like to say something now uh, of, of, on this occasion of great renunciation and its relation between Kapil Vastu, Nepal and Myanmar in Buddhism and Buddhist way of life? Thank you, sir. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. I am very respected Sangha and all participants from all over the Buddhist world. I am indeed delighted and honored to be, to have been invited to participate in this glorious special occasion. The celebration of the 2,616 the great renunciation of our Lord Buddha. I am especially grateful to those <coughs> who have organized and arranged for this gathering. And also to all those distinguished religious leaders and the Dhamma brothers and the Dhamma sisters from all over the world. I am Dauda Ashenandaka from Nandaka Rama Monastery, Mingalaro Township, Yango, Myanmar. And I wish to take this opportunity to present a brief account on the significance of the auspicious of Blue Moon Day of Wazo, or the day of the great renunciation of our Bodhisattva, Siddhartha Gautam Prince, who departed from his palace at the prime age of 29. He had 
never suffered any losses of any kind in his life. But he decided to make this great renunciation just to search for the true inner peace by himself, for himself, and then for this world. Today is known to be a special day for the families of the Buddhist world. Here is a message to be noted of the, this great <coughs> renunciation. We say Mahabhinekamna. This is a Pali word. The Mahami great. Nekamana meaning renounce. The great renounce in the apparent level. In the shallow level, we don't go for now and deep. Satata, Prince Satata, was going forth, was set forth to the forest, river forest. But when we consider, when we consider this great renunciation deeply with attachment or with craving or with the clear, uh, craving or with the desires, anything, nobody can do for the better world. Nobody can perform the best of duties of this world. Only the eradicated of clingings or cravings or desires. These people only can create the better world because the world families are suffering a lot of difficulties in they are day-to-day -day lives. So that's why the renunciation is more deep. Because what is the symbolism of deep great renunciation is? In Pali, we call Sanstika. Maha Bhine Kamanado Pattaya Yawa Arata Mega. Sanstika Bodhi Kaiga Chidrika Uriya. He commented explain about this. Why? Why this great renunciation is very important? But our body said that he started from the day of the great renunciation at midnight until the pineapple. The pineapple means the arata mega. He has practiced with sustainable effort. That means the great effort with the bodily action or mental yeah. action without stopping, without taking any holidays for six long years like this. You know, this is a very, this is a symbolism of the great renunciation, you know. This day marks the beginning of the rain retreat for the Buddhist monks. We find this day to be the truly inspirational. From this day began the Buddhist message to this world to realize the ultimate truth, ultimate peace, the ultimate goal. The people of this world began to consider acquiring the access of wisdom, check of Udabari, and how to think of equality, samanatada, in a freedom, free inquiry, and then just from following the Buddha's message, Gorama Buddha's message. Due to Gorama Buddha's message to this world, the Buddhist people should today be always filled with pride because of our Lord Buddha arising in this one, in this world. Most of people got freedom. Most of people got 
the enlightened knowledge. The special significance events to be noted of this day in this month are in this way. One, it was on the full moon day that our Bodhisattva Prince was conceived in the womb of his mother, the Queen Maya. It might be her age 55 years old. It depicts the symbolism of the light of inner peace. And that only humans can make it. This will be filled with the greatness. Here, the word is Satya, you know. He came from Satya Kalan. Satya means, so to say, he was very able person. The prince said that I was a qualified man. So when he was born, at that time, he said, Ego must be logo. Setoa must be logo. Logo. Jetoa must be logo. I'm the greatest. I'm the biggest. I'm the superior to all. So this is a very, very noted day. Second one, it was this full moon day that our Bodhisattva said to the prince, he had a boy saying the word Nebuddha, you know Nebuddha, from a lady, from a woman, from a young woman, after he had seen the four great signs, as we know, the old man, the sick man, the dead man in the monk, after he has seen these four great signs, he heard a very beautiful, very precious song. It was Nei Buddha. So what Nei Buddha? What means it? The inner peace. Inner means what the driving force for the great renunciation. Because of Nei Buddha, what? You do this, the word Nei Buddha. He set forth into the Uruvila forest, where he practiced the most diligently for six holy years to discover ultimate truth. Here, one thing I would like to say, in order to say these two places, Kapila was to and Lumbini, these two places are very wonderful. And also these two places are the most beautiful for, for many reasons, you know. I want to point it out these reasons. Why is it, you know, because these two places are very much historical places. So history and people from all over the world can come here and visit to study their histories. Two. This is a religious place, holy place, because uh, this is a world religious Buddhist place. So people from Buddhist world, from all over the world, people come and see, pray this the holy land, this Kapila Wotu in, you know, this Lumbini. Another, this is a tourist attractive places, because these two places are one of the most beautiful places in all over the world. To visit this Kapila Wati Lombini, you know, it is a very big dream for all Buddhist people. For those Buddhist people who never been to this place, they wanted to go, wanted to visit here, this Kapila Wati Lombini, because our Lord about us was the place. Also, we have studied many scriptures about the Buddhism. We are very familiar with these two places, even we never be there. After some years ago, because it was 20 years back, I am being visited this year, Kabila Wotu in the Wadaha in the Lomini for two, uh, two, three times also. When I witness these places, are uh, very, I feel very much great feeling. I was feel great pleasure to be witness there, this Kapila Wotu and the Lombini in the White Heart. These are very authentic places about this for all Buddhist people. So should be developed 
by all our Buddhist families, this is it. My point of view. Another thing that it was full moon day that our Lord bowed us beach on the Dimat Madara Ahanjang Madadon Bibay Winia Bidega. To some the five centuries authentic poem magani peace and the discourses, like the other benevolent sets. It was the past ever delivery of the Mastaka Bodana Sultra, filling the heart in the minds of living beings with the knowledge of the truth, in the with sense of hope, and the awareness of the way to attain inner peace. The quality of the Dhamma is filled with richness of the inner peace in the beginning, richness of inner peace in the middle, and the richness of the inner peace in the conclusion. It was such an enormous blessing for mankind, the Dhammachaka Puna Soda. Because, you know, in Buddhist world, there is the Vajira Yana, there is the Mahayana, this is the Therawada. These all schools, without any distribution, when, without any controversy, they accepted the Pono Vetu, they accepted the Nava Epo Pa. Chetubu Satya Wini Mauta Damona Manati. There is no such a thing is free from the Pono of truth. Everything is included in the Pono of truth. With the very the best technique of novel a proper the middle way, we can pass over all the difficulties. You know, the fourth one is that the, it was the full moon day that happened to be the significant moment in time that the established of the Purana to the formation of the Sangha community was initially and auspiciously formed today, you know, in the presence of the Buddha, in the presence of the ascetics, the venerable continue requested for higher ordination. Labeyan, Pabajan, Labeyan, Ubasambra, the Buddha said, Ebe Guchara Brahmatriya Samadokasa and Takriyaya, please come and see, you get rid of all sort of sufferings, you know, Buddha said. He began a big man. He was only one, continue. Then the arising of Sangam Charanangachami. Before it was Buddha Charanangachami and Dhamma Charanangachami. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dhamma. Only today it is self, the arising of Sangha, Sangha Ranangachami, three. So that is why we see these three importance Bhagavan Ranangachami, Dhamman Ranangachami, and this Sangha Ranangachami, three true Bajin. Another stanza in the Mabara, we see uh, one Benuva monk said like this Sukho Bhagavan Mabara, Sukha Satama Dizana, Sukha Sangha Samegi. In the Mecca as possible. When we study of these two comparison, these what make important is like this, you know. Bodha, Dhamma, and Sangha, these three things. Bodha, Buddha plus Ta. The root, the etymological, etymological standing point of the Bodha, Buddha, knower of the truth. He make understanding everyone. Knowledge, Buddha represents the knowledge, you know. Everybody must have knowledge. It is not, Buddha Sanangachami means not to do devotional aspect only. We go together, you, you, you make balance, not only faith, not, not only tata, but also wisdom, Kenya. Make equality of this wisdom and knowledge. This is Buddha. Because Buddha represents the wisdom, the knowledge. This is an information age. You know, every nation, every person who have not, who have not enough knowledge, enough wisdom, 
this nation, these people will be behind every country's because the knowledge leads, the, the confidence leads to this one. This is the Bhutan Sunanka Chambi. Another thing, the Mansur Nanka Chambi. Chara plus. Chara means they are uphold or something, bringing up. The ma raise your life. The righteousness, righteousness. The ma has many meanings, you know, here, the righteousness. The righteousness, the noara of the truth, the noara of the truth, Buddha, in what we call Buddha, is founded the righteousness, the power of the truth. And then Sangha, Sangha has two meanings. You know, the, the unity of Sangha, or others we can say, the care of get rid of all divine means because Sangha God is nine. So, because the Buddha is very important because in symbolism of knowledge, Dhamma is the righteousness, the symbolism of righteousness. And then who will preserve, protect, develop in promotion or propagation of Buddhism? Who be, who loved the Buddha, who loved Dhamma, who loved the, the unity of Sangha, these people can carry on these preachers, the righteousness to all over the world because without make importance of these essence, Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha, no one can raise up this world because this world is uh, a lot of uh, dispute, uh, disputations uh, between one school and another school, between one country and another country, between one ethnic and another country, like this. Because the Buddha represents representative of knowledge, <laughs> equality, justice, and freedom. This is this make this is a very important essence of Buddhism. You know, another thing I would like to uh, put, uh, I would like to add some more uh, knowledge message. The, the make uh, from the ecological standing point. The Buddha was born in Lomini forest. Buddha set for Uruvila forest. Buddha attained the enlightenment and a body tree. Buddha delivered his first sermon in Isri Patana Migadaya. Buddha passed away in the the, under the Sala tree, almost all Buddha stay in Mahawana, Buddha all, always stay in Jedawana. Almost all Buddha's dwelling places are forest because the Buddha appreciates the, this forest area because it makes peacefully, inner peacefully, and then outer peacefully, all, all sort of peacefully. How does Paulwa also should follow the Buddha's way, the Buddha's discourse, Buddha's path, Buddha's message, Buddha's sermons to hear clearly what the Buddha touched, what the Buddha believed. So we have to all follow these things. So this is it, the great message of the Buddha. It started from the great renunciation. Without great renunciation, there will be no precious message appear to be in this world. So that's why the great the great renunciation is the the goodness of in the middle. The Bodhisattva was born in the goodness of in the beginning. The he expounded the Majjaka Puna Slada is goodness of and the end to realize truth. So this is a very important, I am very appreciate to be present with you in this uh, special occasion. I would like to conclude uh, my uh, message. I would like to pray for you. Sukhita ho ta dhokka mochita. Sukhita ho ta dhokka mochita. Sukhita ho ta dhokka mochita. 
may you be free, happy and free from all sort of suffering. Thank you very much. You are patient and listening. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Asin Nandaka. It's been very enlightening speech. Thank you, Honorable. And we are all, all the delegates today and the present today are very well honored from your speech. Thank you very much. Now we would like to invite uh, most venerable Tisna too. Now we are already doing one and a half hour. Okay. We are already doing one and a half hour. So bearing this in mind, let's make it sweet and short and welcome most venerable not two from Vietnam. This is the first time, uh, venerable, most venerable, we are listening, uh, the most venerable not two from Vietnam. Welcome, welcome, sir. Welcome, venerable. Very happy, Dhamma uh, Chakade, respected um, most venerable and friends in the Dhamma. This morning, July 24, the International Buddhist Corporation celebrated Dhamma Chakade to commemorate the Buddha's first sermon to his uh, five disciples at the Peer Park. Uh, sáng ngày hôm nay, ngày 24, These days, he also celebrated by the world as the day of turning of the wheel of the truth. Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, and President of the India, Ramnath Kovic, their little address on the occasion to apprise the teachings of peace and justice um, of the Buddha and the eight point sought by Đức the Buddha Phật. to overcome um, suffering uh, of uh, sentient uh, beings. According to um, Mahayana Buddhism in countries like China, Vietnam, Japan, uh, Korea, thì, uh, particularly in Mahayana Sutra, we can see the Thakotama left Ngày, his palace uh, for the Nazis at the age of 19. Độ, they spent uh, she... five years of seeking the part, six years of uh, self-occupation, uh, and the pain at the age of 30. After 40 years of preaching Dhamma, the Buddha entered Nibbana when he turned into Dựa vào những cái um, lịch sử của Phật giáo đại thừa like như India, um, ở những nước như là Trung Quốc, Thái Nhật Bản, Hàn, Hàn Quốc, Việt Nam, đặc biệt là trong uh, các bài kinh về Bắc Nhật Bản, Thái tử Thái Đa đã rời bỏ ngôi vị của mình và đã vào năm 19 tuổi và Ngài đã khổ luyện trong vòng tròn 5 năm và 6 năm khổ hạnh và sau đó Ngài đã chứng đạt được giác mộ vào năm 30 tuổi. Sau 49 năm thuyết giảng Phật Pháp thì Đức Phật đã nhập Niết Bàn vào năm 80 tuổi. Còn về phía thì nhóm Phật giáo nguyên thủy như ở những nước như là Ấn Độ, Thích Lan, Myanmar và Thái Lan, Lào, Campuchia thì Đức, à, Thái tử thì được ra à, xuất gia vào năm 29, à, 6 năm khổ hạnh và sau đó ngày à, thiền định 49 ngày ở Bồ Đề Đạo Tràng và à, thực tập à, trung đạo cũng như là bác chính đạo và sau đó ngày đã chứng đắc, à, chứng đắc giác ngộ. Hình ảnh Đức Phật từ bỏ cái ngôi vị uh, của mình và cũng như là cuộc sống giàu sang sung sướng trong uh, Phật giáo đại thừa uh, và Phật giáo nguyên thủy vào uh, năm 19 tuổi, 29 tuổi đều là một sự kiện rất là phi thường. Uh, ngài phải uh, trải qua những cái sự uh, chỉ trích về sự uh, bất hiếu, bất nghĩa và sự vô vô trách nhiệm của mình trước khi uh, ngày, uh, trải nghiệm uh, tu khổ hạnh và đạt được nước bàn. Uh, hiểu được cái lý do thánh hạnh của Đức Phật khi Ngài quyết định uh, đi xuất gia và tìm con đường thánh để uh, đạt được uh, sự giải thoát từ khỏi uh, tất cả những khổ đau thì Đức Phật phải hy sinh tất cả những cái hạnh phúc cá nhân và từ bỏ những cái sở hữu thế gian. Và hơn một đó thì mục đích xuất gia vĩ đại của Ngài không chỉ là cho bản thân mà còn là cho tất cả chúng sanh. Sự xuất gia vĩ đại của Đức Phật 
làm niềm cảm hứng cho rất là nhiều người uh, có thể uh, đi theo những bước chân của ngài và phục vụ được nhân sinh các chư tăng ni ở việt nam thì không có quả sẵn giảng pháp năng động như những cái nơi khác những đất nước khác nhưng gần đây thì có một sự tăng trưởng rất là đáng kể với sự xuất hiện của nhiều những sư trẻ rất là nguyên bác lý do mà phật giáo bị suy giảm ở những nước đại thừa đó là sự ngộ nhận về uh, những uh, tu sĩ phải sống một cách uh, tách biệt khỏi cộng đồng để có thể đạt được uh, sự an lạc bên trong. Uh, nó thật khác thì uh, các vị tăng sĩ thường chỉ tập trung vào những cái hạnh phúc cá nhân và đây được xem là điều uh, hoàn toàn ngược lại với cái lý thuyết từ bi của Đạo Phật. Theo Đạo Phật thì chúng ta cần phải trải tâm từ bi đến tất cả mọi người và có thể cứu giúp chúng sinh thoát khỏi những khổ đau. Và các vị tăng ni ở Việt Nam cần phải thay đổi các hành đạo của mình bởi vì hiện nay có rất là nhiều những cái buổi lễ hoặc là những cái nghi thức tính ngưỡng nhờ đó mà các vị Phật tử lại dựa vào những tha lực để có thể đạt được những để cầu nguyện, đạt được sức khỏe và sự giàu có của mình. Trong khi đó thì Đức Phật đã từ bỏ tất cả để có thể sống một đời sống của một người thất sĩ và có thể giúp được tất cả chúng sanh không chỉ riêng cho sự giải thoát của riêng mình dựa vào những bản kinh đại thừa Đức Phật Đức Phật đã đã bỏ ra khoảng trung bình khoảng 9 giờ một ngày trong số 45 năm trường pháp của mình thì, uh, không có lý do gì mà chúng ta lại là những đệ tử của ngài lại ở trong uh, trong rừng hoặc ở trên núi uh, trong suốt khoảng đời tu của mình đặc biệt là uh, trong ngày đại dịch covid mười uh, chín uh, có rất là nhiều tăng ni phật tử đã uh, đã ủng hộ và không quản ngại gian lao để đi cứu những người nạn nhân do Covid-19 gây ra. Và chúng, chúng tôi cũng đã làm việc rất là nhiều với những người bạn khác tôn giáo để có thể chung chung tay với nhau để giúp đỡ cho những người Việt Nam bị uh, mắc Covid và hai ngày khoảng gần đây thì uh, có khoảng 300 uh, những vị tu sĩ rất là dũng cảm và những người cư sĩ uh, từ nhiều tôn giáo khác nhau đã chung tay với nhau uh, để tham gia vào các bệnh viện giả chiến uh, để có thể uh, giúp uh, cho cộng đồng Um, rất là thú vị để chúng ta có thể thấy rằng uh, Đức Phật rất là gắn kết với môi trường thiên nhiên uh, khi ngài sinh ra thì ở uh, cây Osaka uh, ở vườn Lâm Tình Ni uh, vào khoảng năm 29 tuổi thì uh, đã xuất gia và bỏ bố bệnh uh, severe and society Being a company with the nation, as Buddhism was introduced in Vietnam, Vietnamese Buddhist monks, nuns, has always been applying Buddha's teachings in engaging in society activities, including environmental issues. Under the guidance of His Excellency Thich Nhat, President of uh, Vietnam Buddhist Sangha, Buddhist leaders from uh, 63 provinces promote the role of Buddhism 
participated in environmental protections and respond to climate change. Propaganda to increase knowledge and a sense of responsibility among Mosque members, Buddhist and community members to follow the laws of environmental protections, such as avoid using uh, chemical medicines in plants or using robotic chemicals in plants, maintain the natural systems balance by nurturing, respecting and protecting uh, biodiversity and the lives of all species. Encouraging Buddhist uh, monastic uh, Sangha and lay people to actively use public transport, minimize the use of personal vehicles in order to contribute to reducing traffic accidents and reducing environmental pollution. Organizing retreats for teachers and children of Buddhist uh, families aiming to educate young people about traditional moral values and healthy, active lifestyles. Organize uh, humanitarian activities such as building houses of gratitude, donating wheelchairs for disabled uh, people, happy people in blocked disaster areas, and uh, helping lonely elderly people in order to share love and responsibility with society in the spirit of compassion and wisdom of Buddhism. Engage Buddhism moment by uh, words introduced by Jain Master Thich Jukhat in 1963 concerning with Buddhist solution for social, political, and ecological problems. Jain Master Thich Jukhat has been working tirelessly to spread the Buddha Dhamma to the Western countries and has shown that the Buddha teachings are more than just competition and the Sangha members are being uh, more than uh, uh, secluded uh, assets. Uh, Instead, the Sangha members should balance uh, the time of cultivating their mind and uh, socially engaging to better serve the community. Conclusively, it is significant for the Sangha uh, members to realize yeah. the genius purpose of the Buddha's renunciation it works for the benefit and happiness of all sentient beings. Every Buddha's messengers, we, as uh, Buddhist monks, nuns, and lay people, should be able to follow the right path of the Buddha to bring on beings to the cessation of uh, sufferings. Thank you for your attention. And uh, very happy Namakakane again. Thank you, most venerable. Uh, thank you. This is the first time here, disconnect. This is the first time we are listening from Vener most venerable from Vietnam. We are very grateful and we extend our gratitude. And the most venerable also spoke about the climate change environment, which is beautiful. So as a very important aspect of Buddhism, and uh, we extend all our um, uh, gratefulness and gratitude to most venerable <coughs> that too. Now I would like to invite our most respected, venerated professor, Dr. Rabindra Pant, former professor of Nalanda University. Sir, you have so much to say. So I have nothing to uh, uh, tell you as a guideline. So we'd like to listen to you with all our you know, honesty and um, uh, dedication. Okay. Welcome, sir. Ravindra Pan, sir. Professor Pan, sir. Welcome. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa. Most venerable Sangha members, dignitaries, erudite scholars, participants, Dhamma friends, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a moment of joy to participate in the celebration of 2,616th great renunciation of Bodhisattva Prince Siddhartha in search of truth on the full moon day of Asada today. I am thankful to the organizers, especially to Mr. Vikram Pandeji for inviting me 
to this auspicious event. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Friends, the great renunciation was a very important event of the life of Prince Siddhartha. It is called great renunciation because it was not just a renunciation or a sacrifice of an ordinary person for the mundane thing, but a purposeful re renunciation of Bodhisattva to become Buddha. The transformation of a human being to become the Buddha. In this process, it wasn't a transformation of the individual ordinary worlding only, but this individual, a Bodhisattva, did renunciation to find out the remedy of the very cause of suffering in the world for the entire living beings. If we follow the teachings of the Buddha of dependent origination, we find that it was the great renunciation of the Siddhartha which became the cause for his enlightenment at Bodh Gaya and subsequently for the preaching of the Dhamma Chakka Pavattana Sutta or turning the wheel of Dhamma at the deer park at Sarnath, thereby laying the foundation of the Samma Saddhamma for Bahujana Hitaya, Bahujana Sukhaya, Lokanu Kampaya, for the benefit of many, for the happiness of many, out of compassion for the world. This event also took place on the auspicious full moon day of Asara, the day we are celebrating the great renunciation. So two events taking place, it's a wonderful combination. So we can see the great renunciation or great departure of Shakya Prince Siddhartha is the traditional term for departure for his palace, from his palace at Kapilvastu, leaving behind his luxurious life, his beloved wife and the newborn son, sacrificing all the material pleasures to live a life of an ascetic, a recluse, a shamana, to find out the answer of the basic question of life, birth, rebirth, and the suffering in the world. It is called the great renunciation because it is regarded as a great sacrifice. The Buddha's motivation is described as a form of strong religious outburst, some vague, a sense of fear and disgust at the arise, at, that arises when conditioned with the transient nature of the world. The Buddha was shocked to by the pervasiveness of old age, sickness, death, and spoke about a noble quest of stillness in which one faces Dukkha as it is and learns from it. The early Buddhist texts state the Prince Siddhartha's mortification in renouncing the palace life was his external self-examination, being aware that we would grow old, become sick and die. The awareness would also inspire his teachings later, such as, the, uh, the, such as on suffering and the Four Noble Truths. The Buddha has also described his motivation to leave the palace life as a yearning for the life that is wide open and as complete and pure as a polished cell, shell, rather than the, play, the palace which is, which is constructing crowded, dusty. It is suggested that Buddha's motiva motivation to renounce the worldly life was motivated by a belief in opposites, a, fe a feature of the perennial philosophy common in the pre-modern world. That is, that all things in mundane life have their counterpart in divine life. The Buddha looked for the divine counterpart of the suffering of birth, aging, and death. The difference was, though, the, that the Buddha believed he could realize this counterpart in a demonstrable reality in the mundane world, natural to human beings and accessible to the honest seeker. It is a known fact that after leaving the palace, Prince Siddhartha moved towards Magadha 
and lived a life of a recluse for six years. At that time, there was a strong belief among some people that one can attain liberation only by leaving a life of strict asceticism. In accordance with this view, the Buddha subjected himself to severe austerities. Then realizing the utter futility of self-mortification, he adopted a middle path and attained the full enlightenment, Samyak Sambodhi. Two months after the enlightenment, the Buddha decided to teach the Dhamma to the five mendicants, namely Kondanya, Bhadiya, Vappa, Asaji, and Mahanama. The Buddha expounded the middle path which he discovered and which forms the essence of his teaching. At the outset of the discourse, the Buddha said that the recluse should, to, should avoid the two extremes, the indulgence in sensual pleasure and the practice of self-mortification. Abandoning both these extremes, the Buddha discovered the middle path which, he, which leads to enlightenment and this is the noble eightfold path. Then the Buddha expounded the four noble truths, which is the essence of his teaching. That there is suffering, Dukkhang Arya Satchang, Dukkha Nirodhang Arya Satchang, there is a cause of suffering. The noble truth of cessation of suffering, Dukkha Nirodhang Arya Satchang, and finally, the truth of the of path leading to the cessation of suffering. That is, Dukkha Nirodha Gamini Patipada Arya Satchang. These Eightfold path are the basis for Buddha's teaching, which are right understanding, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. Within the fourth noble truth is found the guide to the end of suffering, the noble eightfold path. The eight parts of the path to liberation are grouped into three essential elements of Buddhist practice, moral conduct, mental discipline, that is uh, samadhi, and wisdom, that is pragya. The Buddha taught the eightfold path in virtually all his discourses and his direction are as clear and practical to his followers today as they were when he gave the first discourse. Friends, to conclude, I may say that today is a very auspicious full moon day of Asal when we are celebrating the great renunciation of the Shakya Prince Siddhartha, which became the cause for the, his enlightenment at Bodh Gaya on the full moon day of Vaisaka and transforming him as Buddha. Two months later today, we are also celebrating the Dhamma Chakka Pavattana Day when the Buddha delivered his first sermon and laid the foundation of Saddhamma. You know, one of our speaker, Venerable Anil Shakya, rightly mentioned that Dhamma Chakka Pavattana Sutta shows the sustainable, is the sustainable tool for our harmony in the society as an individual. And as a society, this becomes a wonderful tool for what we can say as lifeology, to live a philosophy, a, 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 a life of peace, happiness, and harmony. The Dhamma, which according to the Buddha is the panacea for all suffering, one may see that it is a way of life to be followed, practiced, and developed by each individual. It is the self-discipline in the body, word, and mind, self-development of and self-purification. It has nothing to do with any belief, prayer, or worship, or a ceremony. In that sense, it has nothing which may popularly be called religious or ritualistic. But and the, the whole teaching of Dhamma is non-sectarian, universal and for all the human beings. It is the freedom, happiness and peace 
It is the path leading to the realization of the ultimate reality to complete freedom, happiness, and peace through moral, spiritual, and intellectual perfection. Let us all practice and make the best use of this wonderful Dhamma in the true sense and live a life of peace, happiness, and harmony at this time of COVID crisis and live a life diligently, supporting each other, sharing with each other. We should be happy always. Thank you, Pandeji, for giving me this opportunity to, since time is fleeting, running away, so I have to be very brief in that. Thank you once again for this Thank wonderful. You, Thank you, Wonder sir, very, very, uh, for your honored presence and uh, your speech has, is very enlightening. You have, uh, you know, highlighted today how important it is, the middle path, okay? So I think everybody should understand what Buddha also finally uh, understood that middle path is the right path for everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your honorable presence. Thank you. May all beings uh, be happy. Yeah. Now we would like to invite uh, our most beautiful lady, Song Song, Khun Song Song, to say something on today's, you know, this auspicious full moon day. And Khun Song Song is a very sociable person doing lots of spirituality, spiritualism, good karma, and good dhamma. So we have we have an honor to listen to Khun Song Song on this auspicious day of great renunciation of Sakya Prince Siddhartha Gautam. Welcome. Welcome, Khun Samsung. There is no voice, Kun Song Song. There is no voice. Can you open your voice? Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, very clear. Okay, very clear. Okay. So, uh, I would like to greet you all, Honorable, Venerable, and all the respectable person who are in our talk show and who are listening and who are participating with us. First of all, so I would like to greet you all in Myanmar language, Minglaba. Minglaba. So that, that means that uh, good evening. So in Thai, yeah, so then uh, I will greet you in also in Thai language also and to all over the world. Okay, so anyhow. So it's a, it's a great honor from Mr. Bikram Pandekaji to let me participate from, from Myanmar in this very important uh, talk show. So first of all, we would like to say about now in current Currently, we are facing a lot of disaster, yeah, in my country and also all over the world. You see what's happening in the disaster. So scientifically speaking, the universe, which the earth we live is part of it and is an infinite space. Lord Buddha himself has mentioned this almost 2,600 years ago, but never a little break is beginning nor its ending. And we can be pretty sure that there are many other worlds in this universe where living beings like ourselves in both human and animal forms are thriving and surviving. But of course, we have no way of knowing what their fate is in store for them. Unlike what we are presently witnessing on our planet Earth today. Living being 
in so many forms and shapes, starting from humans down to microscopic bacteria and virus, as well as in plant and vegetative forms, live independently on our planet Earth. From those living under water, those living on land, as well as those flying in the air, have to share the ocean, sea, rivers, lakes, and pond, as well as the land hills, mountains, have to depend on this natural habitat for their livelihood and survival. However, we human beings, with the advancement of knowledge, intelligence, technology, and scientific know-how, have been trying to amass wealth, expand territory, and deep power in order to satisfy their never-ending desire. This takes in form of both trade intrusion as well as armed conflicts, leading to the destroyance of not only human and other living beings of this earth, but also the natural environment that we all are depending upon. See, so desire, see, a desire is greed and overzealous lust for power within our midst has led people to become very media, materialistic. There is a very tough competition for one social group or one ethnic race or for one country to be more materially advanced with a higher and better living standard than the other. In the course of producing better material things, mankind has polluted its natural environment, causing ozone depletion and global warming, which are the main causes of the climate change we are now being faced with. Overuse of natural resources through excessive mining, both underground and undersea, is another factor that contributed to other Earth's ailing environment. The race of superiority in terms of power is also another destructive element that compounded the disaster situation we are being faced with. New and more deadly arms and weapons using both nuclear and biological are being manufactured and used in warfare to illustrate who possesses and can use the most destructive weapons to gain superior power. The result of these undertakings are droughts, natural disasters, and warfare. We are now facing Lord Buddha has forewarned the destructive disaster mankind and we have to face in the wake of excessive greed, hatred, and ignorance. All we all know, they are divided into three categories, famine, a pandemic and weapons, as explained above. The shortage of food for both human and animal consumption stemmed from overuse of natural resources and overproduction of daily elements that lead to climate change. And we are all being faced with many parts of the earth. Weighing, weighing wars and race for superiority, both in terms of lifestyle and power, are basically based on greedy, hatred, and ignorance. This had led mankind to be faced with two other disasters our Lord Buddha has performed, namely onset of rapid epidemic and deaths by deadly weapons, better this style and us to prolong life has resulted in many voyage and unnatural research that did not actually heal ordinary sickness, but causes ailments and formerly unheard of, including the latest pandemic the whole world is being faced with. Production of new and powerful arms and weapons did not actually deter enemies or wars, but as a matter of fact, it provided a means to suppress the weak by a more powerful entity be it a social, ethically, or a country. Then we have to ask ourselves, what actions do we need to stall those 
over advancing disasters. And of course, we all will agree that there is the four Brahma Vihara, or commonly known as the four immeasurable norms our Lord Buddha has pointed out to us on how to behave and live by for both on mental and physical peace. All of us, especially those learned participants are very much knowledgeable than we common women. I will not dwell on the details, but just to mention that they are loving kindness, Mita. Uh, in comparison, Kaduna, and also Joy, Mudita, and Equanimity, Kupyaka, as long as we human beings can abide by this for infinite mind, peace and prosperity will continue to prevail upon our planet Earth. Therefore, I would like to invite all our participants and listeners to come and visit our predominantly Buddhist countries like Nepal, India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, and Myanmar. Study and learn our Lord Buddha's teaching on the best way to interact between all living beings, social and ethic norms of Buddhism. And last but not least, the way to find and enjoy eternal peace. There are many learned Buddhist monks, monasteries, temples in Buddhist education center when visitors can expand their knowledge on peace of mind through precious yoga lessons and meditation practices. As a participant from Myanmar, especially, invitation is being extended to those interested scholars to pay a visit to a predominantly Buddhist country, not only to study Buddhism, but also to observe how the four religions are interacting with one another and living with peace and harmony in our country. It is a common sight in both, most of our major cities to see Buddhist temples and monasteries laying side by side with Hindu temples, Muslim mosques and Christian churches and people of different faiths mingling economically, socially and religiously in harmony. According to latest available statistics, we have more than 530,000 monks equally split between fully ordained monks and novices with another 60,000 or more female renunciants, commonly known as nuns. Yangon, our former capital city, housed one of the most ancient Buddhist temples, the Great Shredegon Pagoda, as well as Stupa, as well as many other sites of religious interest, including the Cape Lai Bahapasana building, where the last Buddhist congregation was being held. A side trip to Bagan, the once thriving city of first Myanmar dynasty will not be a disappointing venture as there are more than 2,020 Buddhist temples and many ruined other demonstrating demonstrating that Buddhism has thrived since 11th century in central Myanmar. And also in Rakhine, uh, in the west of Myanmar, we also have uh, another ancient city that is since sixth since century. With the promise that I can assure you that your visit to our country will be a most memorable one in terms of religiously, spiritually, culturally, and socially. So then, for this day, I warmly welcome all of you. So please let me conclude my presentation and talks to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ucho. Very enlightening from your own perspective, from your long experience and from your own tested life. It's very enlightening. Thank you, Ucho. And we hope to continue such uh, Zoom session or interaction session or brainstorming session from time to time in future also on auspicious Buddha's day, you know, in different full moon days. So now I would like to go back to Kun Somsong. Kun Somsong, uh, is your voice okay now? Is your voice okay now? 
We cannot hear you. Thank you, Ucho. Thank you again. And uh, Kun Samsung, we cannot hear you. And uh, maybe, you know, we should do it another time, huh? We should do it another time, Kun Samsung, because we want to listen to you. We want to hear your speech. We want to hear your good information logic. And we want to hear your interpretation of Buddha and Buddha's life and Sake Prince's life on this great occasion of great renunciation. So maybe we'll have to do it another time. Okay. So with this, I would like to thank you. Thanks everybody for your patience, listening all these beautiful sermons and beautiful wisdom from all of our, you know, venerable monks and uh, very, very uh, learned people. And uh, we'll have, this is the first time after Buddha, uh, Sake Prince, took his renunciation 2,616 years ago. This is the first time we are organizing, bringing everybody together from all Buddhist nation. So we will do it again every year on this particular day, on the Great Renunciation Day, Asada Purima or uh, Full Moon Day of Asala. So we'll do it every year. And this is our first testing year. And we have quite a good audience and venerables, monks, professors, and doctors, reverends, and very good friends like FND also. So we'll continue this another uh, in future also. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, you know, on this great auspicious full moon day of, uh, and which is, which is so important in the life of Sakya Prince Siddhartha Gautam Buddha, who later became who later became Buddha and gave a good advice and good uh, you know, way of life to all of us, mankind, wherever we are, whichever country we are. And he always gave us the advice and way of life to release. Thank you very much for your patience and we'll be in touch again. And thank you for your uh, uh, attending this uh, Zoom session today. And we'll, we'll continue again on the other auspicious days of Buddha's life in future also. And thank you very much. We conclude it for today. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, FND. Thank you, Minu. Thank you, Mrityanjai, sir. Thank you, Sugat, thank Sugat you. sir, from Sri Lanka. And uh, thank you, Samsung. And we'll do it again. So nothing is never late. Have a nice thing is never late and never finished. So we thank you, thank you very much for inviting you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. May I say just one point? One thing, sure. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, um, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, 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 please, uh, Namotas Bagotuarato Sama Sambuddha, sir. Every speaker spoke of the global warming and what is happening today. It was Buddha, the enlightened one, who himself said that all conditions still change. There is a rising sea, ceasing sea. And what is there is changing from this to that. In fact, in 1960, in the University of Berkeley in California, Dr. Donald Glaser carried out a research using a bubble chamber. He wanted to see at what speed matter changed. In his research, he found out that the matter changed at about 10 to the power 22 times a second. The only force in the world that can impact this matter change, which is the four great elements we know, earth, water, air, and heat, is hatred. Hatred is the worst thing in the world. Unfortunately, particularly sadly, the Western world don't see this. If we can get the message of the Buddha to the rest of the world, particularly in Western Europe, Canada, USA, and all these people, and take it to them, they will realize that we have listened to Buddha, the enlightened one, who has shown us that we have, have compassion, loving kindness, equanimity and all risky joy towards other people. We cannot hate each other. We are all brothers and sisters. The 7.7 .7 billion people in this world are all of one species. 
species homo sapiens human beings why should we think point at each other when i point my index finger at others three other fingers are in my direction which means i have three times more faults than what i am telling the other person so i think this is a great forum thank you mr bikram thank you all uh, and i think let us get this across to the rest of the world so that in time to come there will more and more people come to dumbini to tilavarko to bodh gaya to sinara to uh, sarana to or sankar and all thank you rather for chair you have given a beautiful concluding remark for the day you have made our session beautifully concluded thank you very much yeah, thank you very thank much you thank you thank you thank you yeah kun samsung is your is your voice working la hoy bhai se sunna so we do it again next time thank you very much goodbye goodbye for now so we are closing the session now and sorry kun samsung we'll do it again your voice is not working this time thank you thank you la banda kar de